Hey everybody, so I'm going to be doing a live reaction to co-parenting with the Spurlings. I have not seen this episode at all, so this will be truly a live reaction. Um, before I get started, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Also be sure to go over and check out Dennis Spurling page where you can see all of the episodes of co-parenting with the Spurlings and then also some of the episodes that are going to be coming up. Without further ado, I'm going to bring it up and we'll get started. I'm Dennis Spurling. I... I'm divorced from this lovely lady here to the left of me. And uh, Hi, I'm Stephanie Sperling, and I am divorced from this guy. <laughs> Y'all, the energy in that video already, I'm getting some intense vibes. You know, it's so interesting because like on the optics, they are such a beautiful black family. You know, he's handsome. She's beautiful. They have these cute boys. Um, we already know they're successful. So like the optics of it seems like, man, like... They seem like they have everything that they need to have a successful family. But y'all already know, looks aren't everything. Just because somebody looks the part, just because there may be that attraction, does not mean that the compatibility is there, that things can work out. So already I'm seeing the tension just within the first couple of seconds. The body language, all of that. Incredibly, incredibly tense. Uh, let's continue. <laughs> My job as father is to prepare my sons for what's out there. That's one holiday mama, a year, but there are trying to keep up ties out there. Don't send your second and third. None of this. None of this. None of this. Is head. Yeah. Yeah. Drop it. Okay. And that's what being a grown up is about. Every kid needs to have that lesson. Jeep that's green. Yeah, can even take us to the beach. Yeah, we could do a lot with it, but uh, the main decision was I didn't want to be for that big because it was just so much gas. I'm about to go to a new school, and I'm used to them being with me. I know your son goes to an, like, you have a schooling situation as well. How do you right. deal with it? I don't want you going around picking on anybody, and I don't want you to be a bully, and I don't want you to be a bully either. You hear me? But you are to defend yourself, especially with you being a uh, a, a black successful man, you know, you on the verge of being a millionaire, man. You know, you know. Can you just let me just add this? All of the colorism argument goes completely out, out the window with this because y'all notice that as a successful black man, he is with a dark skin woman. Let me just add that because y'all already know this narrative out there that black men don't like darker skinned women, don't like women who are anything but high yellow or red bone, all that. We've all heard it before, but there are so many examples of black men. Who choose darker women as her first choice. I mean, this series is literally a prime example. Also, by the way, she would never be called a colorist, although she dated somebody who's light. But let's just continue. <laughs> I hope she don't find yeah. out. It's funny, like, that you're talking about that right now because I'm actually going through some stuff. Like, and I, you know, I don't share with a lot of people. I opposed Dennis sending the boys to karate because I thought it was embedding aggression in them. And I thought that they would think that the only resolution to problems is fighting, putting your fists into someone's face. Anthony, my trainer, yeah. is your trainer. My First of all, um, I think men should know how to fight. And there is definitely a time to be aggressive. Women who want protection, which I think is innate to all of us, want to be with men who know how to fight, or want to be with men who know how to how to protect themselves and how to know when to apply aggression. No woman out there wants a soft, wimpy man. Like it's just, I mean, not if you're like a straight heterosexual woman that is attracted. Like that's just not what you want. So I don't understand why teaching young boys how to protect themselves would be a problem. Um, I don't know that's interesting to me, but anyways, let me continue. Also, I just this is just me personally. I really don't think women know how to. Women cannot raise men. W women obviously need to be there. I believe. Um, I think it's important, ideal for a woman and a man to be present in a child's life. There is a reason that a man and a woman are needed to create a kid. That's how God intended it. Both have useful things to offer but with that said like it really takes a man to know how to raise a man especially a black man it takes a black man to know how to raise a black man because only they know the experience only they know the real experience as a black woman i will never fully understand 
what my husband goes through, what my dad goes through, what other black, I'll never fully understand. There might be some shared experiences, but many of them are just, many, I'll just, I'll never fully get it. And it's okay for me to recognize like, hey, there's just certain aspects of your experience that'll never make sense to me. There's a certain level of threat that you're always gonna have um, just by you existing that I'm not used to. And so I think that's where there's probably a certain times where as a woman, even if it doesn't make sense or it may seem too aggressive or whatever, that it's okay to step back and be like, ultimately as a man, you know what men are going to need to survive. Just my thoughts. Okay, let's continue. Now, because we're co-parents and because we have to agree on things, I have to convince her a lot of times to do things that she may be uncomfortable. Oh God. <laughs> brother morris happens to be one of my fraternity brothers so but i'm still his attorney and that uh that outranks every other relationship that we have yeah. while i'm his attorney so george how are you feeling today i'm feeling good brother sterling how are you today i'm doing pretty good um i called you in here today because i was going to give you an update on your case and kind of see what where we were and what's going on and um but what you see here is a lawsuit a that lawsuit. I prepared <laughs> and it has your name on it why did this happen because I got a letter this morning from the insurance adjuster telling me that they got videotape of you out there playing basketball you remember that let's see here it's possible it's possible it's possible it's possible you know my thing is if you know you're supposed to be injured why are you out shooting hoops with the homie <laughs> you know what what's up with that you know you're supposed to be injured you're going to therapy and now you're shooting basketball so that didn't make sense mm -hmm. and that didn't quite match what i knew about jordan he's been very honest so far mm -hmm. i'm willing to fight for you that's what i do i don't mind i enjoy helping people who are hurt mm -hmm. but you know the facts have changed in this case jordan this is going to take a lot longer than i thought so you're just going to have to bear with me i found it necessary to dig through a box full of discovery responses and make some phone calls to my private investigators and so it takes force you to take time away from your own family and that's just what was going to happen the bottom line is first let me go ahead and do my work mm -hmm. and then i think after it's all said and done you'll agree that i've done a yeoman's job here my <laughs> brother okay, okay. <laughs> So I'm visiting Dennis and he says he wants to talk to me about something. I have no clue of what he wants to talk about. You know, I had to let Stephanie know I wasn't going to be able to get the boys this week. <laughs> y'all see, see that face? What, can I go back? Let me just see if I go back. Like she is already, like I said, the energy between them is, is, is I mean, y'all see why they're not together anymore, but she is not happy. I don't know why that was so funny to me. Let me let me just continue. I mean, she's she's already upset and he ain't even said nothing yet. Let's continue to talk about. You know, I had to let Stephanie know I wasn't gonna be able to get the point this weekend. <laughs> okay. Hey Steph, I'm glad you were able to come in today. Uh, how, how's the babysitting going? It's not gone. I, I interview people, I tried to find the babysitters. It's they're not a fit for our kids. I mean, I want somebody good, but I mean at the end of the day, we're on this teamwork thing. I needed you to watch them. Why you can't why can't you watch them today? Well, I mean, today I can't. I mean, I have an emergency come up here. I had to run down to the courthouse. And it just became a whole lot more complicated than it has to be. So I don't I don't have time. I can't. You don't have time. Not today. Not today. I can't do it today. I didn't even know if I could handle it. I had a lot of things going on myself. I had uh, meetings, interviews, and events with the boys. I really needed him to step in. But, but at the end of the day, I need your help. Dennis, I'm just saying this is like, I need help sometime. Like you, you're a professional, but I'm a professional as, as well. I have interviews, I have meetings. There are a lot of activities yeah. that I have to do and I'm missing it. Random stuff comes up, but. Yeah, I, I know and I apologize, but it's really nothing I can do right now. I mean, I just have to do this. I have to take care of this. It's not like I'm. Whoo, this is a very, 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 very real scenario. When you have two career driven people and you're trying to raise kids at a particular point if the kids come first right which there are going to be times when they do somebody something something's going to have to give and if both people are equally as career driven and if, if both people think equally that 
their career should be taken as number one. Um, I could see how that could be incredibly difficult um, if there's not a willingness for somebody to budge. I literally interviewed, actually interviewed a woman a couple, a couple of months ago who is a practicing attorney as we speak. She has 11 kids and her husband actually was a practicing attorney. And she told me that when they were in law school together, she actually had better grades. She actually had, um, I think overall, just a stronger resume, if you will. But when they started, when they got married and they started having kids, she specifically decided to forego some of her career aspirations to focus on the kids and to essentially allow him um, to take the lead in the career route. So, um, and she, and she now, she still practices law. She said she does it as a hobby. Um, but at that point she recognized, look, like, we have kids we can't both be 100 percent at our careers and expect that these kids are going to be raised effectively like something has to get and so i think that's really a reality and that's that's i think the downside of the power couple the unspoken truth about the power couple narrative that is oftentimes pushed whether it's in you know movies narratives whatever where it's like you see both people who are killing in their career but they're able to come together and have this beautiful family and these beautiful kids it's not to say that that can't happen but there is also a reality of sacrifice needs to be made somewhere. And if it's ultimately not somebody's career, it's likely going to be the kids. And then there's going to be that power struggle. If both people think that their career is equally as important, it can just become, I imagine, a nightmare. So again, when you when you hear these conversations of certain, you know, high value men or high earning men or men who are in a particular tax bracket and they say, look, I want a woman who's like this. I want a woman who's submissive, or maybe I want a woman who's, some may say, hey, I don't necessarily want a woman who is specifically career driven. There's truly a practical aspect to that. Or if they are gonna have a woman who is career driven, just making sure that family to her is priority so that she is willing, if, if need be, to, to to adjust. And so I, this, this scene to me is really powerful because I think it sums up and just a few moments the tension that can often exist and usually does exist when there are two career driven people um two probably strong-minded people who believe that their career is highly important and if either of the parties are not willing to budge if there's not willing to be a compromise or whatever then there's ultimately going to be problems and ultimately going to be tension and this is why I do think when you get married, it is important to have those conversations beforehand. It's important to understand ultimately the values of the person. Um, if you're a woman and you have a career and you're marrying a career driven man, are you willing to maybe back down? Are you willing to maybe forego some of your career aspirations if you have kids? Or is the expectation that the man is going to do so and he's going to maybe forego some of his career aspirations for the kids? Like, hopefully those are conversations that you would have beforehand. Um, and... If not, there would at least be willing, there would at least be a willingness to compromise when those things happen. Or if those things happen unexpectedly. If not, you're you're just gonna have some tension. There's really no other way around it. Let's continue. Going out wasting my time. Like I'm trying to dodge my responsibilities as dad to go hang out at some corner club somewhere. You know, Living through the file made me believe you. The yeah, I had work to file. do. I, I I have to make the money. I have to I, I work for myself. You know, I've been wanting to get a new car. You know, it's been a while, and uh, you know, I'm just looking. I might get something that buckets or my babies, cars or our kids. Dennis, right. come on. I, I don't really. I I'm happy. You like the car. You love it. Here's what I need. Can we meet each other like in the middle? Yeah. I need your help. Okay. It was hard. Like I had a I lot to do that day. Yeah, I know. I had stuff to do too. You know, but. You know, that's why you are the custodial parent, and I'm not the custodial that, parent. That's your line. <laughs> that, that is your line. Yeah, that's... Like I said, when you have two people who are equally invested in their career, um, if there's not a willingness to at least meet in the middle or compromise or whatever, it, it's going to lead to this. <laughs> it's going to lead to this, and... It already seems like those conversations were not had beforehand, or maybe maybe each party had an expectation of the other party that was not articulated, and now because they're not meeting the expectation, it's it caused some division. God only knows. Um, but she literally, she sounds like she's wanting a 50-50 relationship, a modern and modern relationship, and um, that... <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know. I mean, from my conversations with, with uh, Dennis Brown, he doesn't strike me as that, as that type. Also, there is the reality if you are a woman who is attracted to the successful, high-earning provider male. We live in a capitalistic system that is highly competitive, that generally means in order to get those resources, he's gonna have to work a lot. I mean, unless he's coming from a family with a trust fund where resources are already available and now he's just tapping into his familiar resources, unless he's coming, he was born into it, he's gonna have to work for that. And to work for that in America, there's yes, there's opportunity, but it's still very hard and competitive. And so again, that's another side of this whole power couple fantasy or this whole high value princess Disney fantasy that some of us see and get is that, yeah, you can have a successful guy if that is a level of importance to you, but also know that things come with it. And that may mean that he's not available as much as you want him to be. It may mean that there's times where it feels like his career is number one or it feels like his job takes precedence. Um, there may actually be expectations that you pick up the slack if you still want that traditional mold. And again, here is where you would hope these conversations would be had beforehand. Um, you would hope that the values ultimately would be would be addressed before anybody goes down the aisle. This is why premarital counseling, I think, is highly important, especially with couples who have been married for a long time, ideally pastors, strong spiritual leaders who have demonstrated in their life that they have happy, successful marriages. Um, again, these are things ideally that you would do before you walk down the aisle and say, I do, so that you don't come into a situation where now there's all these expectations that are not being met because those conversations were not had. Let's continue. But, somebody, no, 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 no. Custodial, but remember we're cold. Yeah, parenting. yeah. Yeah, so, I know. I know you're right. So I have to uh, tell the boys that today they're not going with daddy. I, because that was the expectation. Yeah. They're coming with mommy. I'll work it out. Thanks a lot. Thanks All a right. lot. I'm, I'm going to be here for another six or seven hours. So you just, y'all have a good drink water. Yeah. I'll take I'll care try. of the boys. Talk All to right. you later. Okay. All thanks, Dad. Dennis tells me he has to work. I usually align babysitters or some type of daycare resource in advance, but now I have seriously just a few hours to book the boys and I truly, I don't know what to do. Hey Steph. I could see that being stressful. I could see that being stressful. Um, like she, I'm assuming she already has a job. She already has other stress. And so, yeah, things fall through last minute. I'm sure that's stressful and that's probably the reality of co-parenting. Things happen last minute that you don't, you don't expect. And unfortunately that's going to put more pressure on one parent. I think that's, that's probably again, just another hard reality of co-parenting. I can't say that I understand it and you know, God willing, I hope to never ever understand it from an experience standpoint, but yeah, I could totally see how that would be frustrating to her. And ultimately again, it's like, well, I mean, what do you do? This is the challenging of, of, of co-parenting and being this kind of situation. Hey, hey, Riz. Listen, I was just calling really fast to see if you were available to um, to watch the boys. I, 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 I immediately think to call my friend Riz. She doesn't live far. She has a daughter. She helps me out a lot. I hate to call her because it's last minute notice, and I've kind of called her before. So I'm just hoping that she'll understand. I'm hoping because I couldn't find anybody else, Riz. Please, 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 you can come through again. Stephanie, he cannot keep inconveniencing you and the boys. I mean, it is not fair at all. He has two sons that he needs to help raise with you. So uh, apparently her friend Riza Marissa didn't like the fact that, uh, you know, I couldn't make it at that particular time. She apparently thinks I'm taking advantage of her friend. Okay. And, and, and yeah. You're right, you're right, I, and I will. I will talk to Dennis, uh, Marissa. I'm, I'm gonna try to go to the office and, and, I, and I'll try to work it out, but yeah, just, yeah, I know. That, well, just, it's, it's good to know that you're down to help me. I just, yeah, Stephanie, I mean, it, it's fine. Just talk to him first. And you know, it just, things happen like that. But as far as what her friends have to say, her sister, her mama, her cousins, her third cousin, I don't really care, as long as my kids are happy. Stephanie knows me. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So again, if sisters, cousins, mama, auntie, if they were in the relationship throughout the entirety of the marriage, it was destined 
to be a failure. Like I said, you have got to have those strong boundaries. You cannot have all those voices because, I mean, just take a practical scenario. God forbid you and your husband have an argument. You confide in your mom, your auntie, and your sister about it. You and your husband make up. Y'all done moved on. But your auntie, your mommy, your sister, they they don't forget. They keep that. They don't know when you make up. They don't know when you and your husband progress. They only know the last thing that you said. And usually the last thing that you said is something that's going to make them upset. And so just by you confiding in them and sharing your side of the story, not telling the entire picture, leaving out details, key details, I will probably change the narrative. But just, just by you uncovering your husband in that way and bringing them in your drama and bringing them in your business again it is destined to be a mess it is incredibly incredibly important that you have those strong boundaries because like i said your mom and your auntie and your daddy and your aunt or whatever as much as they try it's impossible for them to be unbiased especially when it comes to you as your loved one and that other person being somebody that they're trying to ingratiate into the family. It's impossible for them to be unbiased. So you do not want to be going to them for all of your marital issues. You need to have, if you really need to have somebody, it needs to be somebody who, a third party who likely, hopefully is not related to you, that you and your husband agree with beforehand that you're comfortable with. You don't want to be confiding in somebody that your husband doesn't like, doesn't trust, did not agree with, or vice versa. Again, if those boundaries are not set, it, that's incredibly unhealthy. I'll, I'll give you a call in just a few to let you know what he says after I leave you off. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Okay. Bye, Steph. Bye-bye. So Riz agreed to do it, but I know when I pull up, I will hear an earful. It's, it's understandable, but I'm just so happy that she's able to come through for me. I appreciate it. I really wanted to spend time with the boys that weekend. I mean, they grow up so quick. And then the next thing you know, she comes it. up, so you missing more days. You know, I just did the best I could. Hey, Steph, how you doing? Hey, how's it going? Hey, look, I appreciate you looking uh, looking out for me and taking the boys. I'm actually on my way back to the courthouse to get these documents. No, I, I understand. It's a real complicated case. I know you were telling me. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do the best I can to push this case and get this thing moving so that we, uh, you know, I, you know how important it is for me to spend time with the boys. Yeah. Um, you know what? What else? You got both people working, both parents working. They're both putting in hours. Hopefully, right? Hopefully they would be an understanding that like, hey, there might be times where your husband's job is just super demanding for whatever reason there's nothing really he can do and you may cover that you may compensate you may do a little bit more with the kids you may stay up more you may do more of the taking this school whatever it may be like you're willing to cover him in that instance and there might be times when look your job is ramping up and hopefully he would be willing to maybe step in like if if you're not constantly keeping score but it's about working together and making things work no matter no matter what, then hopefully there would be that understanding of like, hey, it's really not 50-50, it's 100-100, right? It's I'm gonna do the best that I can, he's gonna do the best that I can. There's gonna be times where it doesn't feel like it's balanced and equal, but ultimately it's about the overall goal, right? There's gonna be times where I, I, I sacrifice and that's fine. Um, so that's what you would hope in a scenario like this that would happen because that, I mean, this is real life. There are things that come up that nobody can that nobody can control. There are situations where, especially if you're working with a man that you want to be successful, there's going to be hours. There's going to be maybe things in his job. There's going to be demands that ultimately it's he meets that demand and brings in the money that you're wanting and that you're complaining about if you don't have, or he doesn't meet the demand, but now he probably don't have a job and you're still complaining because now he ain't bringing in the money. So it's like, this is just the reality of working with, a working man especially one that's successful um that needs to be navigated and again i understand women work too she's probably a, a, at a job that requires um hours and requires responsibility and again that's or you you know you would hope that both parties would be willing to work together and accommodate those natural changes ebbs and flows that happen in marriage um what i'll do is um my friend was telling me about uh nanny 
service. I'll look into some nannies for us because we need someone. We have a lot going on. Mm -hmm. We need some consistency for the boys. And I was so happy and I was looking forward to it all just working out. Okay. Um, you know, just uh, keep me posted and, uh, and just let me know where you guys are and then I'll just talk to you later on. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I see someone looks like Becky. Oh, you, oh, you, you see your sister? Just like her. Oh, oh, someone that looks like your sister. You know what? Let me call you right back. Just, just finish it. No problem over here. Take care of it. Just give me a call later and we'll see you later. Okay. You can't get those moments back, you know, so the pressure was on for me to try and do what I like to do and that's spend time with my sons. Bye bye. Hey, Jeremy. Hey, what's up, bro? Hey, hey, man. Are you, uh, you did the discovery on that, that Morris case, right? The, the Morris case? Yeah, yeah, I just finished the discovery on that the other day. What you need? Okay, does he have a brother? Yeah, we got pictures of the whole family. All right, great. Have him text me a, have him text me a picture of his brother right now. Okay, I'll send it to you right away. Just let me know if you need anything else. Matter of fact, send the whole family. I want to see what they look like. All right, I'm headed back to the office now. All right, later. All right, later. Stephanie's always been helpful. You know, she always does stuff to help jog my memory, even when she doesn't know. Well, I oh, that's okay. Yeah, You're talking about the big, big one? I mean, they all was big. big enough, so we won how much? We? <laughs> oh, man, see, we're <laughs> cool. <laughs> nah, it's time it's to scary. go. <laughs> Yo, Dennis! Dennis! So I'm walking down the street, minding my own. I just... I'm hecka slow. She literally just said, we won. Then he's like, wait, we? They're not married anymore. So there is no more we. I mean, maybe we with respect to how to raise these kids. But apart from that, all the bene the benefits associated with being married to a man, the, the money, the success, all that, that kind of goes out the window when you divorce, though. It took me a while to catch that joke. I'm like, wait, she's talking about we as if... They're still a couple. They're not a couple anymore. But she still probably wants the benefits of that hard work. Although, I know she was a bit frustrated with the hard work itself, especially when it impacted the family. Again, that's the reality of living in a system that we do live in. <laughs> and who pops up out of nowhere? Dorian, the defense lawyer. All right. You know what? I'm trying to ignore him because the last person I want to talk to is this guy. But you know what? He keeps... Hey, What's Dorian Hicks, up? how you doing today? I'm doing all right. How you doing? I'm, I'm pretty good. I just wanted to talk to you a little bit. You know, this Morris case we got. Yeah. I don't know what you think you got, but this is going to be an easy case for me. Yeah, you yeah. Know, I uh, do this uh, kind of stuff all the time, and you really don't have nowhere to go with this. So Yeah, you're probably right. You, 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 know. you guys are great lawyers over there. I'm, I'm glad, to, uh, glad to see that you you're keep working hard, go. though, you know. I will. We'll okay. continue doing it. All you right. need to be worried about that car you got in that driveway, okay? I'm trying to ignore him because the last person I want to talk to is this guy. But you know what? He keeps egging me on from behind and harassing me, talking about how good he thinks his version of the case is. So you know what? I had to bust his bubble. Because I saw you in the garage. You ain't looking too clean, man. You know what, Mr. Hicks? What? Let me show you something. What you going to show me? You got a new car? Oh, wait, no. You no. got something else. You know who that is? That's that, your client. That's my client. Yeah, that's your client. That's my client's brother. So that videotape that you have of my client is probably not my client. That's probably my client's brother. Do you know who it was? You know what? Sometimes you ever get in a game of basketball at the park and you got some guy talking crap to you. You know what? I had to pack him down and put him in his place. Uh -oh. <laughs> I know exactly who it was. Don't you worry about that. Okay, I'm going to yeah. get that taken care of. But okay. you know. Just go ahead and get yourself a new car and let me worry about this case, right. okay? Well, I'm going to let you worry about that. I will. And I'm going to go worry about getting this new car. Thank All you right. very much. I appreciate it. Have a good day, Dorian. You too. All right. Stephanie had dropped the boys off. It just so happened that I would resolved Mr. Morris's case. So, you know, I'm relieved about that. Uh, the stress is off and I have an opportunity to spend some time with my sons. So, these are your boys? Yeah, that's Dennis and Roman. Uh, hey, boys, go ahead and go in the conference room for a little while. Daddy has to talk to Mr. Jordan about his case. All right, thanks. Yeah, yeah they're so. going to be two great alphas. Oh, <laughs> here you are hamming it up. Well, you know, I hope so. I hope they're following <laughs> Daddy's footsteps. But as far as your case, 
Um, you see it's grown tremendously since the last time you were here. And yes, I've done a lot of work. Be. Bottom line is we're in a good place. Uh, I think defense counsel is going, is going to get with the insurance company adjuster and they're going to make an offer and we'll be done with it. Cool. All right. you're, you're amazing, Brother Sperling. Thank you so much. So that means I'm going to get a check at the end of the day, right? You know, like any other client, you know, they don't really care about how much work you've done. They don't care about uh, the tough arguments that you've had to make and come up with. They just care about is the case over? Yeah. When am I going to get my money? <laughs> well, it means they're going to make an offer. If you accept that offer, then you know, we'll take the attorney's fees and the court costs and medical expenses out of that and you get the rest. That's what that means. Okay, so I'm going to get a check. It means, my brother, <laughs> that <laughs> they're going to make an offer <laughs> and if you find that offer reasonable then you can accept it <laughs> and then we'll pay everybody and you get the rest. That's the only thing I can promise. Okay, well All I right. trust you brother. Right. brother. Thank you so much. I appreciate you and uh, you know I worked real hard on this case and uh, I it's, see. it's been my pleasure. I see. I, I thank you. I'm not saying Jordan was that bad, but pretty much, rap brother or not, he wanted to know when he was going to get his money. I'm he didn't it. care about the arguments. He didn't care about the pictures. He it. just wanted to know when am I going to get my money. Hey, we're hooping this Saturday if you want to come through. It's a <laughs> okay, okay. I'm a, I'm a, I'll, I'll send you a text message. I'll see yeah. if I can get back with Do you. Do that. Bring the boys. Bring the All boys. Right. I'll have Lil' Jay with me. I'll try and come out there. All okay. Right. Sounds All good. All right. Thanks, Brad. Talk to you later. Yes, sir. All right. All right, Thank bro. you, so Thank you very friend. much. No problem. Have yes, a great day. Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> Mr. Morris was out the door. Now I'm free to hang out with the boys. Sweet. Uh, the boys and I hanging out in the backyard playing soccer. I like to get out there with them and kick the ball around and show them, who, you know, who's boss. But sometimes, you know, they, they're young, they're strong, they're quick. I might hurt my back if I keep it up. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Parts heck of endearing. <laughs> I just like seeing, I like seeing fathers and sons, especially black men with their, their sons uh, and their kids playing around. I mean, y'all remember that point that that came out from the CDC about black men being some of the most involved in the children's lives? Prime example. <laughs> Go. Footwork, footwork, yeah. It's like daddy. Yeah, that is. Okay, okay, yeah. Watch it. Be careful. Good job, good job, good job. Take it, take it, take it all the way. While I was in the backyard playing soccer with the boys, I got a call from my ex. Mm. Hey, what's up, baby? How you doing? Oh, yeah, I'm just in the backyard whooping them kids. Soccer showing them who's a boss. I'm a boss. Oh, okay. Wow, really? And she was telling me how she was sick. And I'm like, well, go to the doctor. What's wrong? You got a cold or something? Why are you calling me about this? Oh, oh, in the school. Did you go drinking last night? Why are you throwing up? Uh oh. Or did you make a doctor's appointment? Mm. Oh, wow. What do you think it is? Yikes. It kind of sounded like one thing, but I didn't want to jump to any conclusions. So I just uh, told her to take care of herself, go to the doctor, and keep me posted. Mm. Okay. All right. Well, uh, can you post it? Just let me know what's up. You know, I don't, um, it could be anything. You know, you, it's a lot of stuff going on. Flu, Zika virus, Ebola, you never know. But I'm, no. I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> you know, without going into any detail, the type of sickness she was describing um, didn't really seem like a sickness at all. Uh -oh. It seemed like more like a, uh -oh. a precursor, so to speak. Uh oh. Okay. All right, well, just keep me posted. I'll be here. I'm just in the backyard, like I said, okay. for you here. Pregnancy is well, I mean, hey, I hope she gets better. I didn't know what was going on, but I hope whatever sickness that was, she gets better. And I hope it's not the type of sickness that I think it is. All right. Okay. Talk to you later. Deal. Bye. Pregnancy scares. <laughs> Coming up next, on. I know you're still going to be on a prowl for like SUV or a van or something, right? Bentley. GT, Continental, two door, pewter. Are you sure? She's pregnant. And those two babies. Yeah. And anybody who can't get in or fit in needs to get out. 
conversation but, but with I know. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Just to keep, we have a great structure. Stephanie was talking all that stuff about why I shouldn't get the car. And as soon as I get it, now she wants to take it for a spin. Co-parenting with the Sperling. Wait, I'm like, who the daddy? Wait, she pregnant? Who was the daddy? How long have they been divorced? No, I'm curious. Man, if there's two baby daddies, that's going to be complicated. Yeah, co-parenting looks rather complicated. And they have a situation that is amicable enough to where they can at least be in the same room, speak to one another, and not completely try to pull each other's eyes out. Um, so this is probably more of the better, more amicable co-parenting situations out there, believe it or not. And you already see how complicated it is and how it is constantly trying to manage a personality that you don't really get it well with like that. That's, that's, <laughs> that is nothing that anybody should want to sign up for by themselves so moral of the story try not to get in the situation if you can at all avoid it if you do find yourself in the situation then you know you just kind of have to do do what you do to make the best of it but i think ideally when people do think about coming together and making a family and having kids a lot of a lot of the the, the important conversations would be had beforehand aligning on values aligning on expectations aligning on well who is doing what practically we're both working we're both in high demanding jobs when we start having kids what's going to happen are we going to get a nanny are we going to get a nanny so we can both focus on our careers or is one of us going to be willing to step away from work a little bit maybe take a reduced workload are we willing to do that if we want to have kids like these are real life conversations what are the values we want to still instill in our kids what are the spiritual values? Are we saving? Are we, we believe in the same God? Do we, do we have the same values there? Or is there just one atheist and one is, a, you know what I mean? Um, discipline. What does that look like? Like, again, these are really, really important conversations that ideally should be have way before you think about even walking down the aisle. This is why I highly recommend premarital counseling. Um, it's something that me and my husband did before we got married. We worked with two different pastors. Um, sometimes just working with one is enough, but again, they took us down, not just the practical side, but really dealing with this, this, the spiritual side, the emotional side, the values, making sure that we aligned on values and then trying to unpack some of the different areas that might cause tension between me and my husband before we walk on the aisle. I think that is incredibly important so that you can um, hopefully avoid these kind of situations if you can. I'm not saying that a pre that premarital counseling is a cure-all. It's not. People do it and people... People do it and do get divorced and some people don't do it and have happy marriages. I'm not saying it's a cure-all, but um, moral of the story is a lot of these conversations should be had beforehand, ideally before you start bringing kids into the scenario. So there's not all these unspoken expectations, there's not these mis-expectations, and then there's not this tension and all this other stuff. Also keep grown folks out of grown folks business. Keep grown folks out of grown folks business keep grown folks out of grown folks business like seriously keep grown folks out of grown folks business when it comes to you and your husband trying to work out a situation trying to work out a problem in your marriage that should be between you god and your husband okay you god and your husband and then if for some reason you and your husband both believe that you cannot figure the situation out or it would be beneficial for you to include a third party at that point i believe you should work with a person or a couple that y'all have already agreed with beforehand and nobody else can find that person or those persons that couple you know work out whatever marital issues that you need to and then keep it there but you don't want to go talking to your aunt or your sister or your mom or your dad or your uncles or whatever. Like you don't want to be confiding all those day-to-day -day struggles with those people because it'll be impossible for them to be unbiased. And that will indefinitely cause tension in your marriage. And then it'll probably start to stir up dissension. It'll start to stir up distrust. If you have this woman talking to you, be like, girl, who needs to treat me like that? Girl, he should be doing this. He should be doing that. He should be doing that. 
you are naturally going to start questioning that man. You may not start trusting him. You may start being discontent. And then he's like, where is this energy coming from? Like, I thought we were cool. But then you're coming back with this different energy. And then you're, now you're having all these outside, these outside influences that truthfully, truthfully do not need to be influencing you. This episode to me is also a reminder of how important it is to have a strong spiritual foundation in a marriage. I believe covenant marriage right? Covenant marriage is between man, woman, and God, right? Where man submits to God, submits to Christ, receives vision, direction, clarity from Christ, and then woman submits to the man. And of course, there is scripture that talks about men and women submitting one into another, basically talking about how there is a constant desire to serve one another and to make sure that each other's needs are being, being met. But ultimately, there is that but ultimately there is that order in place, not, not for, not so that the woman can be oppressed, not so that the man can have everything that he wants all the time, but as a way to keep things in order and truthfully as a way to maintain strong boundaries. And um, to me, practically, this looks like understanding what needs to be done in the moment. There may be a situation where a woman may think, look, I've been doing more here, or I've been sacrificing more, or I've been this or this or that. But ultimately, God speaks to you and you recognize, look, even if you don't want it, or even if you don't agree with what's going on right now, the best thing for you to do is to submit. Submit to what God is saying, to submit to what God is doing, and submit ultimately to what God is showing your husband. There are times when God is showing your husband things that you may not agree with, but you submit to it because ultimately that is your role in the relationship. And then there's going to be times right where your husband or God tells your husband to, 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 to serve, to love his wife, to do different things that may be beyond himself, but is about serving and nurturing and building her up, even when he feels like she doesn't deserve it. And so, so I think having the, the spiritual, the spiritual understanding of marriage is really important because there's likely going to be times in the relationship where you don't feel like your needs are being met or the person isn't doing or operating the way that you want and the thing that's going to sustain you and the thing that's going to encourage you to still treat that person right and encourage you to still love that person is not necessarily going to be their behavior but it's going to be your reverence for god it's going to be your obedience to the most high it's going to be your love and devotion to christ so this is why for me having a spiritual foundation is crucial to maintaining a marriage to maintaining any kind of relationship because when that person fails you when they don't be your expectations when when there's miscommunication the thing that keeps you loyal and the thing that keeps you coming back is ultimately your obedience to god and recognizing even if i don't like the way he's treating me or even if i don't agree with what's going on right now i'm doing this because ultimately i answer to god and i think that to me that conviction is really important to have otherwise it can devolve into he said this she said that i'm not getting my needs met he's not getting his needs met and ultimately no man and no woman can truly fulfill all your needs it's just not possible so um this one episode already there's i think there's a lot of good lessons to learn ultimately try not to get yourself in the scenario <laughs> but if you do find yourself in the scenario obviously there's different things that you can do there's the things that you can do there's different ways you can navigate it and i'm sure there's there are ways that you can come to you can learn compromise and learn to work together with somebody even if there's a bit of tension um but ultimately it's just a reminder of how complicated co-parenting is <laughs> so that's what i got from the first episode but what do y'all think do you agree do you disagree let me know also be sure to check out um, the full episode on Dennis Sperling channels. He's also going to be dropping other episodes around this whole series. Um, so be sure to check it out. Be sure to like, share, subscribe before you leave. And leave your comment down in the comment section. Let me know what you think of this content. Let me know what you think of the review. Just let me know what you think in general. Thank you so much for listening. If you've gotten this far. And we'll talk later. Bye.